So here's a picture that's almost um, done with the leaves and the ground around it. It's golden, golden grass here. And um, the leaves, we're not going to draw like every single leaf in perfect detail. We're going to kind of do um, what I might call intelligent scribbling. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So here I kind of have just, they're just patterns that are kind of basic leaf shapes, similar to how leaves might look. And, um, and they're in fall colors. Um, you might notice if you go to the store or you're shopping, um, or if you go to a party in the fall, you might see things like paper plates or napkins with designs of leaves on them. Okay, there's a napkin. Um, I have a pamphlet here. I don't even know what it's from, but it's um, an advertisement, and I thought it was a really cool brochure. It has different leaves, um, small and large, kind of a general leaf shape. And um, if you notice the shape of the leaf, I almost like to break it down. There's almost like five points. Like there's one big point here, and then another two points there, and then smaller points here and kind of in the with the yellow leaf the same thing there's like a main point here two things here and then smaller ones there and um so i'm going to talk about intelligent scribbling so we're talking about intelligent scribbling so if i just kind of do a scribble like this and um You could probably guess and you'd say that that's a person. So we're talking about intelligent scribbling. So if I just um, did something like this, and basically did a quick scribble, you could probably say that would be a person. It doesn't have a lot of detail, but you know it's a person, okay? Um, now, say I do, um, person's got his hand on his hip and it's kind of leaning, okay? So you'll recognize what that is. I might do a quick scribble. Of a person. Um, you recognize that probably as a person, they might be walking or they might be running, but um, you don't see the detail of, of the person. You don't know who it is. You don't recognize them. And um, it's just a general scribble, but you recognize that it is a person. So when it comes to leaves, I can just, you know, if I'm looking at this leaf here and I wanna copy that leaf and I wanna draw that leaf, I can like do all the details of the leaf and draw it as detailed as I can. And there's my leaf and I can draw like the veins on the leaf and make it look totally realistic. Well, if I'm drawing all the leaves on my tree, it will take forever to do that. So I have my tree here. Here's my tree. Look at all my branches. I'm doing just a quick sketch of my tree. But if I start drawing like a smaller version of that, and I'm gonna put, okay, I'm gonna have that perfect leaf there. There's one. And then I'm gonna draw another. There's another one. I'm going to draw this one. It's going to overlap with that one. It's going to take a long time to draw them perfectly like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do, erase that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to um, do some what I call intelligent scribbling. So um, if this is my leaf, I'll make it a little bit smaller. 
and it's got kind of like five little things to it. So I'm gonna scribble um, and try to scribble a shape. Now, if I just go like that and I just scribble a circle, that's a circle, okay? I know it has five different things, so I'm not gonna just go like that and call that a leaf. So I might kind of go like five areas like that, okay? So it kind of looks like a star. I could just go like that, and then it looks like an asterisk, or I can make a star, but that's not intelligent scribbling to the point that I'm making it look like a leaf. This one's probably the closest. So I know it has five areas, so I might kind of say there's three, and then these are a little bit smaller. So there's my start. And to make it look more like the leaf, I'm gonna fill it in a little bit more and I'm just still scribbling, but all of a sudden it looks a little more like a leaf. I can change the angle. I can start out with kind of a triangle of, um, and then another couple things coming out here, And but I'm just kind of scribbling. And then if I wanna get the jagged pieces of the leaf, I could have like little jagged things. And um, it's gonna look more and more like a leaf and nobody's gonna say, oh, that's a bunch of tennis shoes on that tree or whatever. They're gonna, they won't say it's a bunch of ice cream cone, it's a bunch of chocolate chip cookies on that tree. They're gonna say, oh, those are leaves because they're gonna be the right color and they're gonna be generally the right shape. So we don't wanna just do a bunch of circles on our tree, you know, or scribbles like this or asterisks or stars. We want to actually do something that's we're scribbling it um, like it's a quick scribble sketch, but it looks like a leaf. Okay, so now, so here's my quick little sketches of um, my tree structures. So when I start doing the leaves, we're talking about intelligent scribbling, but how the leaves grow is important. I'm not gonna just do, I'm not gonna do just little circles and I'm not gonna do asterisks or stars, but I'm not gonna put them in rows on the branches, okay? They're not gonna be like a bunch of birds here in a row, like just lining up on the tree. The leaves are gonna grow in clusters, and a lot of the new growth of the leaves is on the twigs, on the outside edges of like the little tiny things. So we're gonna start, we're not gonna worry about having a stem for every leaf but we're going to do clusters. So I'm gonna do some intelligent scribbling and I'm gonna do like some clusters of leaves and I'm gonna do some different colors, but we're gonna kind of, I guess what I would say is hover around the um, branches and we're not gonna actually touch them on top of the branches to begin with. We're gonna have, we're gonna hover with them and we're gonna do them in color, but we want them kind of hanging out not necessarily touching the branch to begin with. Eventually they'll touch the branches and, and we'll overlap the colors so we don't have to worry about doing twigs, but they're gonna be kind of hovering like that. So I'm gonna show you what that might look like in color. So getting back to working in color, I'm gonna show you some pictures of um, fall. Notice how there's lots of leaves on the ground here and there are, lots of them are orange a little red, a little brown. Um, this is a, a photograph, it's kind of cool because you see the contrast of the blue with the orange leaves and they stand out really well. Here's another one where it's on the water, you see the reflection, but bright orange um, leaves, yellow, gold, some brown, some deep red. A lot of these are like calendars or magazine covers. This is from a magazine cover. But look how the, the blanket of leaves on the ground is really fun. Um, here, some of them have fallen and they're like on the side of the road so you don't see as many. But look at all the colors. We're looking for colors um, and what colors we might use. This one has a lot of bright reds. Um, so we're gonna go back to our crayon box and I actually took my crayons out of the big box and I put them in a plastic container and um, what I like to do is I'll, I'll keep them in here lined up like this. And when I'm looking for colors, I'm looking for orange right now, I'm gonna roll my hands around in here and I'm gonna be looking for colors. I see some oranges and pink, there's another orange. And there's a 
brownish red I might use. And so I'm gonna just look in here and find some possibilities of what I think would work. Okay, that's neon orange. I don't think I'll use that. Okay, so I think I have enough. So I'll move that to the side. And these are the colors I have that I think might be applicable. So I'm gonna look and I'm gonna go to my test paper and I'm just gonna kind of pick the colors and do kind of a test thing. Okay, that's a dark orange. I like that one. I'm gonna put the browns over here because I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna do. There's a more reddish tone. That's kind of a brownish red. That's kind of a light orange, that'll work. I think I'll keep the golden color because that's pretty good. That's kind of bright. This one's kind of a bricky orange. That one's a good one. I think all these are pretty good. So yeah, I think those are good and I might use a couple of these brownish. Now that one, I don't think I'll use that one because that one is kind of dull. This one's a little bit better brown. And then, yeah, I don't think I'll use the super dark browns. Okay, so I'll get rid of those. So these are the colors I'm gonna use, okay? So as I'm gonna start doing my leaves on here, we talked about intelligent scribbling and we talked about overlapping a little bit. So I'm gonna put my leaves are not gonna grow in rows like birds on a wire or birds on a line or something. They're gonna be um, in clusters. And generally a tree grows and you've got new little twigs coming out here and the leaves are growing on the new twigs. So I might start with, I'm gonna start with the lighter color. Um, I'll go, go with the lighter orange. I'm gonna test this over here. Okay, and I'm gonna make a few leaves. And remember I said we're gonna hover and we're doing intelligent scribbling. Here's the shape of a leaf. So I'll have that be right there. So that kind of gives me some idea. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna, I don't wanna make them look like just stars, but I'm gonna try to make them look like general leaf shapes. So I've got like five pronged little leaves and if they look too starish, I'm gonna fill them in, but I'm just gonna kind of scribble a little bit and change the angles a little bit. And if I'm looking at a leaf sideways, it's gonna look a little bit different. So I'm just gonna have some clusters of one color um, a little bit on the leaf. So I might do, I might do five. And I'll have a smaller leaf, some bigger, but there's my cluster five. Then I'm gonna set that color aside and then I might um, do another color that's a little bit darker. So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then maybe overlap some of them. Some of them will overlap on top of the branch. I'll probably use the darker ones on the branch, but I'm gonna do them in clusters. So I'm seeing a little bit of overlap and we're kind of getting the illusion of the clusters of leaves. So I might do kind of around one branch and don't worry that they all look um, perfectly like leaves or not, okay? We just want a sampling of leaves. Some will look more like the shape of leaves than others. I'm gonna do um, a couple branches here so you can kind of get the idea of how I'm doing the overlap. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start on the, on the outside edges of the branches first, like just off, off the tip of the branch. And I'm not gonna do them in, in perfect order all the time, I'm gonna just what we might call random. That means like it's not totally planned. It just kind of, I'll just do it in no particular set order and no set pattern, but just in what we would call random or chance um, placement, okay? So I'm just gonna draw these little shapes and I'm just gonna continue doing that on my tree. Um, and I'm gonna get, each time I'm gonna go a little bit darker and then when I get to the super dark color, then um, I'll have some good contrast. The reason I'm doing the yellow or the light oranges first is if I did the red, the deepest red, and then I tried to overlap it with yellow, the yellow won't overlap it. So if I do like this deep red and I make like a kind of a leaf scribble there, there's my leaf scribble. And then I try to do yellow on top of it and overlap it. I'm not gonna, the yellow is not gonna show other than next to it, it won't show on top of that. Whereas if I do the yellow first, 
and I've got it completely in the lighter color. And then I come over and overlap a little bit with the red. It's um, the yellow will still be yellow and um, it won't be like, won't disappear. So it'll show up a little bit better. So, um, so I'm gonna start with light and work towards darker. So I'm gonna fill my tree up and then I'm going to um, kind of on the outskirts and be careful you don't make it look like it's perfectly rounded like a bush. See how this one, it's like there's a cluster here, there's a cluster here, there's a little space here, there's a little space here, space here, space here. And we want some space in between. We'll fill that in with sky. And um, in some of the areas of the branches, like I might overlap on top of this branch here. I might put some leaves because there could be some twigs coming out of that branch right there. So I might do a little cluster in here as well as a cluster on the outside of, of that particular branch. So when I, when I want to overlap on top of the tree branches, I'll probably have to use a darker color because if I do yellow on top of the brown tree branch, the yellow is not going to show up. So nobody will know that I have a yellow leaf there. So it's like probably this deeper, deeper brown or the deeper red will show up if I want to go right on. Yeah, the deeper red would probably be better on top of the tree. So if I want to do something like on top of the branch here to kind of overlap on the branch, the deeper red is going to be a better color. Okay. So I'm going to just keep laying these out. I'm going to alternate, do a few orange, a few yellow, but um, be careful that you don't make them circles. Um, let me show you, like say I did a scribble here and it looks like a circle. It almost looks like a cherry or a Christmas tree ornament or something. So I want to make sure that it has, if it, if it doesn't look like it's a leaf shape, I'm gonna work with it a little bit more and I'm gonna draw a little bit more till it looks like it's jagged, kind of like a leaf. And, um, you know, people will know their leaves because it's a tree, so they don't have to be perfect. But if you make them all round or you make them look like twinkly stars, um, they're not gonna look as realistic like leaves might be. So just try to, you know, scribble in a way that it looks like it's kind of a leaf shape, okay? And you're gonna do it all over the tree. And then after you do the tree, I'm gonna stop here. Then you're gonna look, think about the ground. Now in my picture over here, see how I have the ground um, Remember, we didn't do it right at the foot of the tree. We're gonna move it up a little bit. So I might put the ground about right here. And that way I can have leaves on the ground around here. So if I want to, I'm gonna get my pencil to hold on. Okay, so I might make a plan, like see how my ground line isn't like directly at the bottom of the trunk. It's just a little bit above. And so it looks like I have space around the tree here. So I put it, I don't know, it's about an inch above there and then um, here, this one's a little higher, and that's where my ground line was established, and this one's a little bit lower than that one. So I'm going to, and then here's one that's pretty high. So I'm going to decide where I'm going to put my ground on this. I think I'm going to have my ground be here, and I can make it flat, or I'm just going to kind of give a general area. So I'm going to do it really lightly in pencil. I don't know that you can even see where the line is, but it's right here, and it's here. I don't want to do it super heavy because I don't want the pencil to show up. Um, underneath my crayon. So what I'm going to do is after I get leaves on the tree, I'm going to come and I'm going to go on the ground. And I'm going to um, put some leaves that might be, um, might have fallen and they might be in, I want them in round, random clusters. Remember I talked about clustering they're gonna be kind of at the base of the tree. They're not gonna line up in a row because they didn't fall and say, I'll go here and you go here and you go there. They just kind of fell off the tree and the wind might have carried them. Um, so they might be just in interesting clusters and in interesting order. It won't be the same. So don't make them all the same, okay? So I'm gonna start with the lighter ones and then I'm gonna go, um, with a little bit orange and I'm gonna just put kind of random arrangement. I'm not gonna have it be any set order. I might have this one be over here 
And I'm gonna keep doing that, what we call intelligent scribbling. So that we're scribbling that it kind of um, resembles a leaf. And I'm gonna keep going back and forth with different colors to um, create the variety of colors. And um, I'm not gonna do leaves completely on the ground like that one photograph. That probably would take me forever. But I, I wanna make some grass because I really like um, grass. So I'm gonna, you know, put put a few leaves here and I can put more or less, it's up to you. Sometimes there's more leaves on the tree because they haven't fallen and there's not so many or maybe somebody raked them up and they've been cleaned up and they're no longer all over the ground. Um, when my girls were little, I have three daughters and we had a tree that lost its leaves in the fall and they were so pretty and the kids like to play in the leaves. So we would just let them keep falling and we actually left them, as long as they were pretty, um, oranges and yellows, we left them on the ground because it was kind of fun. It looked pretty and then our girls would like to go out and they'd pick up handfuls of them and just throw them up in the air and it was kind of like it was raining beautiful color leaves or they would just fall into the pile if it was really thick and it would kind of cushion them and it felt really good to just fall into the soft bed of leaves. So we would, um, we'd kind of leave them there for a little while. And then when they got brown or it got kind of, they got old, they got crunchy and they weren't so pretty and then they were kind of messy and so then we would rake them up and throw them away. But So you can have as many on the ground as you want. And so that's the next stage of what you're gonna do with the leaves. Um, on the tree, on the ground. And then when you're done with that, if you want to have a few falling off the tree, um, you can make a few, almost like the wind's blowing them. And if you make them falling off the tree, don't make 20 leaves, don't make them pouring out like a waterfall. Um, you want them kind of randomly, just like they were blowing off the tree. Um, like the wind, wind came up and just blew a few off the tree so they're just a bit just kind of a few maybe randomly um, but I'd probably limit it to maybe I don't know maybe five maybe six but not like 20 because um, we want to make sure it looks like they're on the tree and maybe on the ground so Okay, so that I'm gonna have you get going with that. You're gonna do the same thing with this tree and you can do them, you can do complete one and then complete the other later, but we'll start, remember you're gonna start with the lighter color and we're gonna do, you know, same thing. These are gonna be a little bit smaller because this tree is a little bit smaller than that, but you're gonna just do like clusters. And I usually like to do maybe three of one color um, to begin with at a time and don't make all the clusters look the same and remember we're going light to dark so that we can overlap and um, and we're starting at the ends of the branches at the very ends um, we're not doing in rows on the tree and we're not just doing we're not doing little perfect balls of round um, clusters of leaves. We're doing um, just kind of random clusters. Okay, so we're gonna, and we're gonna again use the different colors, overlapping the colors and not a set number. If they start looking, um, I don't wanna mess up these. I'm gonna get my dry erase board and show you. So we're doing intelligent scribbling and we're doing clusters kind of random. If you start making a cluster, like say we do a cluster here and I, sorry, I don't have different colors um, with the dry erase board, but if I make it so it's all perfectly, a perfect little round cluster, that kind of looks a little bit, makes me think of a poodle that just got back from the groomer and the poodle um, has the perfect little tail with the perfect little round um, fur on the tail and then the perfect little round little 
part on the head. So we don't want them to be perfectly round all over the cluster. So if it's looking round like that and too perfect, let's let's kind of mess it up a little bit by adding adding one that's kind of um, cluster that kind of makes it not so even. So if it starts looking too perfect, maybe add a add some leaves so it takes away see how it's no longer a perfect circle. So if I have another one that's kind of a perfect little circle here and it's looking too perfect and too round with my little scribbles, make it a little bit uneven, like add another leaf there over here to kind of make it look like it's not perfectly round. But um, and people will understand that it's leaves, they'll know it's a tree and the colors, everything will say, I'm a leaf on a tree by what you do, but try not to make it the perfect little, um, like it was perfectly trimmed, like like those trees at It's a Small World in Disneyland that are like elephant shapes and um, different creatures or a giraffe. We want it to just look like it's just random growth on the tree, so it's more organic. So, okay, so have fun. Um, do those clusters on the branches and then do the um, leaves on the ground and then after you finish that, we will come back and we'll talk about the grass. So this is kind of where you're going right now, um, these two things, okay? So have fun and um, I can't wait to see your progress.